Hello, let's do a call driven slash critical build. This one doesn't need a shadow link, but it needs a unique ring called caster refraction. It's actually a common drop, it shouldn't be hard to get it, but without the caster refraction, this build doesn't work as intended basically. That caster refraction ring, it makes those uh, tornadoes keep tracking the enemies basically. So that would be the main idea. I chose to do this as a call, but you can do it any element you want. It works on any element, it doesn't matter, you can do it even physical. So let's get into it. Skill board should look something like this. So on the Riven Slash, you want to have Convert Call Damage, Multi-Shot, Piercing, Pierce, Pierce Wound, Confidence, and Additional Call Damage. Basically, Multi-Shot, Piercing, and Pierce Wound, you want to keep those all the time because these give you the most damage. You don't want to change those. On Attack and Hands, we are using Marksman. You can use Vital Strike, but if you have Caster Refraction, Vital Strike loses a lot of value, so Marksman is going to be better. On Marksman, you want to have Increased Duration, Time Acceleration, and Enhance Effect. On Defense and Enhance, you want to use Siphon Life with Increased Duration and Time Acceleration. Shadow Provocation is just for extra armor. On that one, you want to have Time Acceleration, Enhance Effect, Shout of Power. Lingering Shout, Hushet Shout, and Buff Activation when hit, so it would proc automatically. For movement abilities, Leap Attack, Roll linked with Disarm. For Seals, for Offensive Seal you can use Condensed Element. For Defensive Seal you can use Elemental Domain or Resistances or Physical Domain, whatever you need the most. I'm also using Blood Explosion, that is converted to Cold Damage together with extract energy and resource cost dampening basically to extract some cold energies and to get uh, extra elemental damage decrease per stack on illusion axe i'm converted to fire damage with extract energy and dampen resource cost to basically extract fire energies to get that nice increased damage per stack Shadow of Justice with buff activation will crowd control just for the defenses, so you wouldn't be chain CC'd and you wouldn't die. For itemization, so the most important thing is, is Castle Refraction, unique. Without this, Verbin Slash is not gonna work. It basically guides Verbin Slash projectiles to the enemy, so. It adds a lot of single target damage, even if it dampens the damage, you still want to have this, because without the ring, Verven Slash doesn't work, just in general. So, if you're looking to do this build, please get Castle Refraction, otherwise this build is just crap. To simply put it. And Castle Refraction itself is actually people using this on any build, just because of the flat critical rate, it's really popular right now. So keep that in mind. If you have Castle Fighter, Gloves, use those too because it gives you pierce count and this build scales really insanely good with the pierce. And these gloves, like in general, are really good. It decreases uh, dodge rate and armor on the enemies. I mean, dodge rate is what we're looking for because we are not doing main physical damage unless you choose to do this build as physical, which you can. I'm just showing you call damage one, but yeah, these gloves are really good. Boreal Horizon is, again, it's for every single build, it's not specific to this one, it's basically just max energy count, some elemental resistances, and it helps you to sustaining your energies. But you don't have to have this one, just have Castor Vision. After that, it's simple, you go for highest critical base weapon, that is 13 to hand a sword, and then you roll whatever you can. This is pretty de decent roll. It's not anything crazy, by the way. Uh, it, it was just for the YouTube, but this is what I have. So, gear critical rate would be the main one. Then you can have attack damage multi. Then critical damage on the suffix. On the prefix you want, I have lightning damage, but it actually should be cold damage. But I didn't bother to running it. And they roll subcraft of, of elemental damage, so this was really good. Speed is good. This is authority mod, pierce count, so... If you are crafting authorities, get pierce count plus projectile damage. This is a really good one. Otherwise, instead of lightning flat, you want cold flat. And if you can't get pierce, you just want attack damage on a prefix. Attack damage for the weapon, basically. Weapon flat. 
I have it on the legendary prefix, but you know, legendary prefix is not what you aim, is what you get. Otherwise, you want a ring with attack critical rate implicit on the ring again. Attack critical rate main one, critical damage main one. On prefix part, you want attack speed, projectile damage, or elemental damage. Then you can get HPs, whatever you can roll, basically. <coughs> it's up to you, whatever you can get. On the neck, of course, we are looking for critical implicit neck. This is authority one, but basically you want uh, elemental damage on the prefix. Then if you can get, you can do call damage flat on the prefix, but I didn't get it. I got only HP and hit rate, but it'll roll hit rate in the crit damage. On the suffix part, this is authority one. This is just fire, basically fire neck. It's, it's, it's really common. A lot of people do that for chance to get damage amp on every hit. But with this build, you basically keep this all the time. Like, on every single build, you can keep this on 100% uptime. It's not that hard. Elemental resistances, whatever you need else on the suffix. Resistances, stats, whatever you can get the most. On the armor part, I'm, I'm doing a little bit of a mix, but I don't suggest you do that. Especially if you're a new player. So basically, the idea is, I'm stacking armor plus HP on the prefix part. I want to have as much as much uh, armor as I can. So armor, HP. You can even roll flat armor. It's gonna be really good. And hand skill run duration is authority craft, and these are authority crafts. But you don't have to aim for those. Just get on the suffix what you can. So on the helmet, I'm I'm mixing a little bit. I'm going for armor and dodge because I'm using shadow provocation and when I proc my shadow provocation my armor is around 50k which is not too high. You want to have around 100k with, uh, with shadow provocation but I didn't do too good crafts so I'm a little bit low but it works. I'm not doing high level content on this one but I would suggest to pick up armor base chest and Armor based shoulders. I went for Barvier because this build hits so many times. And if you pick up that node that I showed for the extra Barvier on hit, you can sustain your Barvier really good and you don't need much of it. Like I have 1.3k is more than enough. But if you're a new player, just go full armor and don't think about it. Just take it easy and when you understand the build more, you can start doing shenanigans like I do. Like barrier shoulders, dodge uh, helmets, but the main idea is the same. You still want to roll gear dodge rate, HPs, and on the suffix, whatever resistances you can get. For zodiacs, you can start something like this. Of course, there are so many things you can do on the zodiacs right now, but I think this is the most balanced one, and I would suggest to start with this one. First Aphros, then into Swamp for Damn Cold, then for Excellent Senses and Alchemist, Destructive Power, Twisted Element. Twisted Element is important because it gives you status effect rate. You want that at least to have a little bit to apply basically cold status that is freeze or chill. After that, you want to pick up uh, Muscle Strength Explosion, HP on every attack hit, Man on every attack hit, Barrier on every attack hit. Even if you're not gonna have Barrier, or you're gonna have not that much, this is really good node. Elaborate attack, this is basically flat crit chance, which is really nice. If you're looking for some defensive options, you can go into group def group defense. So Bounty Hunter specializes in Elite and group defense. Group defense is basically damage taking decrease, which is not bad early. After that, it's Armor Piercing Ammunition. You don't have to pick up Archer Rage. It looks good, but projectile dampening actually costs you a lot. And you have so many projectiles already, so plus two is not going to be that much of a difference. So just pick up Armor Piercing Ammunition. It's going to be good. After that, you want to go into Thirst for Elements, so Elemental Damage Arm, basically. Then you definitely want to pick up Fang and Discharge Deadly Poison. 
It's only 8% projectile damage dampening. It's better than 10, right? And plus 2 projectile count. This is not bad. This is not bad. This one is kind of optional, but you can copy paste. So basically what it does, you get uh, damage jump against stunned enemies. And this is the same, you get uh, damage jump against frozen enemies. Basically these 5 points is, the, is so much damage jump, but you need to remember, you need to have that status effect rate. And of course, physical is not gonna work without physical damage, but in this build, I picked up some physical damage, I'm gonna show you. But then you can pick up power of harmony if your stats are 200 and, and, and more. So this is basically where we get our physical damage, it's power of nature. By the way, when you're doing elemental build and you pick up physical damage, it's not gonna show up on the leaderboards, by the way. When you do like elemental leaderboards, Physical damage is not counted to, but I still highly suggest to pick up because this gives you a lot of extra CC. And you can proc blood explosion with this. Then there is one point for HP. I also picked up lightning damage. Again, it doesn't show on the leaderboards, but it gives you insane amount of shock. Especially when our damage is so high. So we apply a big shock and it increases your damage overall, which is really nice. I always pick up Strong Will. Mm, just because I'm playing hardcore. It disables crit, but your damage is amplified by 15% that you take. But this is, I would say this is worth, but you don't have to pick that one if you don't want to. You can spend those points somewhere else. Then just Piercing Call, but this is basically just to activate the stone, by the way. Because you, for the moon, you need to have at least three points invested. That basically would be it. Then we can go into specialization. So I'm running Dawn. I think Dawn is a really good one. Easy to do. Doesn't require that much brain power. So powerful hit, overpower, convert mana. If you're running Medal of Penance, you don't have to pick up convert mana. You can pick up more damage in here. Then you want strike damage jump and element observer. Non non negotiable basically. This is the best you can do, and there is no min max to do anymore in here. Sharpness is sharpness is not much. I don't suggest to pick up sharpness. Sharpness it, it's on how much crit we have and how much crit damage we have. This is basically nothing. For third spec, you want to go for the sympathy. So strike damage jump. HP absorber hit, attack speed amplification. If you if you have so much attack speed, you can pick up capable. Or if you don't want HP, you can pick up capable. But capable is not that big, by the way. I would keep it this way. It makes more sense. That would be it for the zodiacs. For charms, there is not that many choices. But the only viable option is lower, mirror city, caster. But I suggest to pick up level 230, you want this one, convert damage to main element, then Merosetti 230, and then you want Castor 140 for the damage taken, damage taken decrease and damage jump. This would be the way to do it. Because Ruin Slash doesn't have that many tags, so this is all, these three are only your viable option. So do that. For the charms themselves, Pick up crit rate, crit damage, and damage when two-handed if you are looking for most offensive option. Crit rate and crit damage is the main one you want to get. Third option can be HP, resistances. On the third one, just pick up whatever you can, what you can get. I got even hit rate, but it's just the charms that I got. But remember, crit damage and crit rate is the most important one. I even have some defensive ones, but as I said, just pick up whatever you need the most. Relics you want to start with Sabda for mental stimulation. Mental stimulation together with cooldown recovery speed and enhanced damage decrease. If you want more damage you can become increased buff effect but you're gonna take a little bit more damage with that. For the passive it's always default, chaos resist. For the second one you can go for powerful damage on the speaker for chance to deal double maximize damage on hit which is a lot. Doesn't matter that we don't benefit from physical damage. Then Aquila for cold damage pen which is the best one 
And instead of going for Boreal, I actually went for Castor for Sanctum Effect. This Sanctum Effect is actually gonna help you with Rune Master XP, because right now Blessing Sanctum on the map gives you Rune Master XP, and this Enhanced Sanctum Effect increases that XP gain, so this is not a bad one, but you can still go Boreal if you want to. For Rune Master levels, it's basically default choice. You want to pick up damage amp against cold statuses. As you can see, I have it on poison because rune master levels are actually account wide, not character wide. And this is not my main build, but basically you want to pick up against cold status. If you have additional lightning damage, you can pick up against lightning status. And if you have those already maxed out, you can go into against physical status. It just depends what kind of statuses you apply on this build and what you choose on your zodiacs. But if you copy paste me, just go for cold damage, then go for physical, and then go for lightning. This is basically the best you can pick up. Really, a lot of damage jump for 5 points, it's really nice. Algorithm on the skill board should look something like this. Basically, I didn't change much, because there is nothing to change. But the main idea is, Vervan slash Awakening, and you should do this at the last because there is no good awakening, it's gonna be Verity. Only Verity is option is viable option, but do this the last, it doesn't matter. For the multi-shot, again, do this the last. You can go for Reset Origin or you can go Verity. For piercing, this is what you want to aim for. For piercing, you can go Verity or Source. Verity should work decently and source would it's easier and probably a little bit more damage especially early for pierce wound is simple you want to get verity for pierce count and pierce wound effect this is really good one for mana storm i mean it's it's up to you i'm using mana storm in, in here but you can find something else also you want source or verity Instead of using Mana Storm, if you're having some mana problems, you can use just Elemental Damage Jump. At some point, you, you will want to change the additional Cold Damage, and that probably gonna be Elemental Damage Jump, but I kept this. Because to outscale that flat damage takes quite a bit of good crafts, and that might take you a while, so remember that. On Maxman, you want to awaken your Maxman into Origin for Enhanced Skill Rune Effect. And they added Decrease Duration for the Maxman. Because at some point, you want to get more Skill Rune Effect. And Skill Rune Duration Dampening is actually even better. Because it increases uptime and you get so much Skill Rune Effect, it makes sense a lot. I also added Seal of Striking for Strike Damage Amplification in instead of Condensed Elements. And this is going to be really late into the game if you want to. Not a bad idea. And they added Pen Slash with Disarm basically instead of Leap Attack and Roll. Whenever you, when you awaken your Leap Attack to Verity, you get plus 2 max use count. And you don't need 2 movement abilities. Only Pen Slash is going to be more than enough to keep you, to keep you moving basically. So I want to demonstrate a little bit how this build works, but you can see right now, basically I'm applying Freeze, Stun, Chill, Bleed at the same time, Bind, Shock, and a lot of other stuff. And I'm generating Fire Energies, Earth Energies, Cold Energies. Earth Energies come from Blood Explosion, by the way, because Blood Explosion on the tooltip has 20% to give you Earth Energy. So this is basically the main idea of the build. You freeze, you chill, you stun, you have so much CC. Don't look at my damage because this build scales insanely good. I don't have even that much on this build. Damage is insane by the way on this build. That's everything I wanted to say. Thanks for watching. I hope you're gonna enjoy this build. It's really good one, scales really good. Get, you have sh like insane amount of damage. And if you have any questions, you can find me on Twitch or just ask some questions on YouTube. Also on the Discord if you want to. So yeah, GG's, have fun, and see you on the next one.